I mean, something that's so viscous and that's gonna really protect your strands from it being brittle, okay? And being broken and as well as your scalp, scalp, your skin and everything like that. I can totally see why people love this stuff. Welcome back, welcome back. I wanna say what's up to all the subbies. And I wanna say what's up to all the newbies that may be checking me out for the first time. We call them newbies around here, okay? Those looky-loos and people who are just interested and may be peeking in. It doesn't even matter. You don't have to peek in, just come on in. Come on in, come on in. Get comfortable, it's okay. We are gonna chit chat just for a little bit, okay? Today, we are going to talk about hair BNB. Don't say, what are you talking about, hair BNB? Well, I'm about to tell you. So basically, I want to go over two things, two little gems. One you may know about, okay? In fact, one a lot of people know about and basically use. And the other, maybe not so much. It's sort of on the QT and on the hush hush as far as in the hair community, but both of these can be very helpful in our overall hair's health as well as its growth. So let's just hop right on to it, okay? Hair B&B. &B. The first one I'm gonna talk about is the one that you're already familiar with, I'm pretty sure. Both naturals and relax and anybody in between, everybody can use this particular item and this is black castor oil, okay? black castor oil, or sometimes, or more commonly known as Jamaican black castor oil, and that's because of how it's processed. But let's just break that down really quickly. Black castor oil is a very dark, viscous vegetable oil that has basically been extracted from the castor seed or the castor bean. Now, just to make a little distinction, there's castor oil and there's black castor oil, okay? So castor oil, it's lighter, it's thinner, and it basically goes through a cold press, okay? So it goes through pressure. They pressure the beans to get the oil from the beans, okay, to get the vegetable oil from the beans. Now, black castor oil, on the other hand, it goes through a heat process where they basically roast the beans, okay, to get the oil from the beans. It turns out darker, it's much thicker, and it usually has a burnt smell to it or some type of rich, roasty smell to it, for the lack of a better term. Both can be used for hair, but as you can imagine, you would want something a little more viscous, depending on your hair texture. But we're gonna focus in on black castor oil. Black castor oil has been talked about and raved about, and there are many reasons why. Because of its viscosity, and because of its moisturizing properties, being that it's an oil, it is very effective in moisturizing, okay, and making sure that the hair is well taken care of on the moisture front as far as the shaft, as well as the scalp. So it has not only been used for hair health, but also scalp health. With regard to dryness for both, it's been talked about as far as being a healing agent for eczema, or at least mitigating the effects of eczema on the scalp and skin. It has been touted as a great resource for stimulating the scalp, thus, promoting hair growth, as well as it has antimicrobial properties. Again, dealing back with anything that's going to grow on the scalp or keeping anything, anything that would mar or scar or affect the skin, even as far as acne and other skin ailments. So black castor oil or Jamaican black castor oil, it's got a lot of boastings under its belt. Okay. A lot of boastings under its belt, including of course, what most people use it for is hair growth. It helps to thicken the strands, which again, helps to promote its health as well as its growth. Now, truth be told, not only has it been used on the hair on your head, but it's also been used to promote growth in both eyelashes 
and eyebrow. So did you know that? Maybe you did, but if you didn't, I'm putting that out there. So now you know, okay? So with that being said, it has been widely touted as a great advocate for hair health. One important note to the black castor oil is that it is very, it is very thick, okay? It is very heavy. So a lot of naturals, they use it, you know, with much success and, you know, much ballyhoo. And there are others that use it, but one should be aware that it is heavy. So when you use it, most people use it as a treatment and not necessarily a hair dressing. When I say hair dressing, you know, like an oil or a pomade that you may use as a finishing, you know, give you some shine or something like that. Instead, a lot of times it's used as a treatment, you know, to help stimulate the scalp. They put it on the scalp and the roots of the hair and massage it in. And again, as some type of treatment to protect the ends of your hair while styling. But a lot of people use it. A lot of people talk about it. And I can see why, because even for me, even though I haven't used it when I first started my hair journey and, you know, my hair was falling out, da, da, da. Uh, and I'm growing it back. Uh, my neighbor, my neighbor, she used it. She has long, beautiful hair. I haven't seen her in a while. I hope she's okay. She may have moved. But anyway, my neighbor, uh, she used it because she saw me and we just, you know, one morning when I was on my way to work, you know, you do your little pleasantries. I saw her in the hallway. I said, hey, da -da -da. oh, your hair is so pretty. She said, oh, black castor oil. Like she went immediately to that, like to testify black castor oil. I said, oh, okay. Knowing in the back of my head, I had heard of that before, but this woman, she I mean, basically, that, that was her thing, you know, black castor oil. And to describe her hair, just so, as a reference, it was very thick and she looked natural, okay? She looked like she was natural because it was out and thick and how can I describe it? Sort of like a Shaka Khan or Rudy, you know, Rudy from the Huxtables when she was really little and she used to wear her hair out, they used to braid it out and, or leave it out or whatever. That type of thickness and that type of fullness. Again, me looking at her hair, she looked natural, didn't look like anything was processed or she had any type of chemicals in her hair and that's what she used and that's what she said help to grow her hair because her hair was very long like it was it was it was long and i had just begun my my journey so i was pretty much to my shoulders you know at that point but i i told her you know i said okay great thank you for telling me that so i took that away but i it was it was notable it was a notable moment because again i had heard of it but here is someone that i actually spoke to who could tell me firsthand hey this is what this is what I this is what I use. So with that being said, a lot of people use it. Again, I have not. Those with fine hair and those with relaxed hair, as far as if you're using, if you normally style your hair like mine or some type of curls or whatever, you may wanna use it as a treatment and not necessarily, like I said, a hair dressing because it can weigh your hair down, okay? For those with fine strands and relaxed hair, depending on what you're going for, it can weigh your hair down, but it may be good for those styles where you're not using heat, you're not worried about curls, you're just going to basically moisturize your strands, okay, as well as your scalp and maybe pull it back in a ponytail or in a bun. It could be perfect for that, but I wanted to put that one out there, even though I know it's already out there, but I figure I'd add my little two cents to the mix as far as Jamaican black castor oil. And as far as I know, again, you can use regular, there's regular castor oil and Jamaican black castor oil or black castor oil. They're both said to basically be beneficial for the skin and hair. But out of the two, the black castor oil really stands out a little bit more. And they say it's because of the processing, the heat processing, which includes the roasting of the seeds that uh, leaves ash behind. And that ash seems to really boost its efficacy as far as between the two. It really gives it that extra punch as far as all the benefits you can get from the castor oil. So that's why a lot of people focus more in on the black castor oil because it's rich in the ash and ash has a lot of beneficial 
properties as well. So with that being said, you may want to check it out if you haven't before. There are many testimonies out there. Like I said, I had a first hand one with my neighbor. You can see why. I mean, something that's so viscous and that's going to really protect your strands from it being brittle okay and being broken and as well as your scalp and scalp your skin and everything like that i can totally see why people love this stuff okay so if you're on the lookout for something to help counteract dryness counteract brittleness in your hair as well as properly moisturizing your scalp and maybe dealing with some other issues you may be having, you may wanna check it out, okay? And it's readily available at a lot of different places. Online, there's a lot of different brands. And again, people focus in on the Jamaican black castor oil because in Jamaica, that's basically how they process it. They've been known to process it that way and that's why it's labeled Jamaican black castor oil, okay? So that's another goodie. That's one of the B's in the B and B that I wanted to talk about. Now the other B in the B and B that we are talking about today, I want to talk about and I wanted to let you know about black strap molasses. Okay? Black strap molasses. Now this one I have taken firsthand. Let me tell you about black strap molasses. Black strap molasses is wonderful it is a nutrient dense elixir honey okay it is rich in a whole bunch of things so let's just break that down really quickly molasses itself okay molasses is basically it is a thick rich byproduct of sugar cane from refining sugar cane or sugar beets so basically through this refining process the aftermath, okay, or what is the result is molasses, which is the nutrient dense version of the sugar cane and the sugar beets. It basically leaves you with the better part of sugar. None of the empty calories and all of the nutrients. And I'm about to get to that. So what nutrients am I talking about? Well, hold on to your bloomers, honey. We are about to go through all, well, not all of them because there's so many, but we're going to go through some of them. I'm just going to name a few. It is rich in potassium. It is rich in magnesium. It is rich in zinc. It is rich in iron. Okay. We're going to go back to the, we're coming back to the iron. Okay. We're going to do a full loop with that one. I'm going to get back to that. Iron as well as copper. Now make a note of that too, because we're going to we're going to expound on that. So anyway, it's rich in a lot of different things. Now the difference between molasses and blackstrap is basically, again, the processing. Blackstrap molasses has been boiled three times. One, two, three. It goes through a triple boiling process. Thus, it makes it more rich in these things, more rich in the minerals that I just named. That's what gives it its thickness, its color, and as well as all of its minerals, it's more densely packed in black strap molasses than regular molasses, okay? That's why we're focusing in on black strap because that's where it's at, the black strap. So let's get back to all the goodies. Remember I was talking about the iron and, and this and that? Okay, and remember I was talking about, you know, how everybody knows my story, how my hair was falling out, this and that. that that's from anemia, okay? My hair was falling out from anemia, which is a lack of or not enough iron in the body. So with regard to the blackstrap molasses, when I was going through all that, I was focusing on getting my iron levels up and this helped tremendously. I started taking it and I that along with everything else that I was doing, it helped me get my levels up to the point where, of course, I'm not anemic anymore. I don't claim that over myself anymore. My iron levels are where they should be and I'm back, you know, I'm leveled out. But it's very rich in iron. So anyone who is dealing with anemia or any type of iron deficiency, you may want to check this one out. You may want to put this one on your list and I'm serious. Not only will it help with your iron levels, but it's also an antioxidant, okay? So it's going to help with all those free radicals in your body. So we, we're, we're referring to aging, okay, at this point. You don't want free radicals, okay? We don't want any type of radicals in your body, especially the free ones, okay? So the free radicals is going to help take care of them, okay? It's, it's going to get them straight. So not only that, but 
copper. Okay, remember I told you to put an asterisk. We're going to pin that. The, the copper, we come back to copper. Copper, hold on, hold on. Copper is very helpful in staving off grays. One more time, one more time for the people in the back. Copper helps to stave off grays, okay? And in many cases, it helps to reverse it. You know, gray hair is a result of us losing the melanocytes or melanin, okay? Melanin in our hair, that's all that's about, okay? So as you lose the melanin, it turns gray or silver or whatever, but let's just say gray. This helps to reverse it. It helps to stave it off, slow it down and reverse it because it helps with cell renewal and it helps to replenish that melanin that you are losing or may have lost in your hair. The iron and the copper, as well as everything else, the zinc and everything, this thing is, it, it, I'm telling you, black strap molasses is where it's at, okay? It, it just is, it's where it's at. It's great for overall health because, because of how much it has going for it underneath its cap. What I did when I took it, I used to take it with uh, orange juice. I used to put like a teaspoon, I think I put about one teaspoon and two teaspoons in orange juice because vitamin C, which of course is in orange juice, it helps with the absorption of iron. So whenever you are taking iron or iron pills or whatever, it's good to boost its absorption into your body with, you know, a side of vitamin C, okay, with a shot of vitamin C, however you get it. So I did it via the orange juice. Now, 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 before we go too far, it would be help, very helpful for me to say, one caveat is the taste. The, the taste it ain't that great, okay? At least not to me. It, it's I would say that the taste for black strap molasses is an acquired taste. If if you can acquire it, some of us with sensitive palates, we we may just have to, to to muscle through it. If I were to describe it, I would say I would liken it to licorice, okay? Black licorice. Now I'm not a licorice person. I think it's bitter. I'm not. Now my mom, she loves licorice. I, on the other hand, not so much. So with that being said, I would say black strap molasses. I would sort of liken it to licorice where it has this bitter, sharp taste at the end or sort of in the middle or wherever it is. But that's how I would like, you know, that's what I would compare it to. But again, I put in my orange juice, I, you know, swirling around and I just make sure I just gulped it all and I just, you know, powered through it. But the benefits outweigh that taste. Again, if you're looking for something that's really gonna help level you out as far as get those minerals in you, uh, help you with your iron intake as far as your levels, maybe stave off some grays that may be popping up. But it's a really great resource for a lot of nutrients. It's a really great resource for a lot of good things for our overall health. It really is. Now I will say as far as the molasses as well, I would go for the unsulfured, okay? I, I believe there's a um, regular version and then there's unsulfured. What's the difference between the two? Molasses, uh, when it goes through this process, when it's sulfured, that means that sulfur is added. They take young sugar cane that hasn't really, you know, gotten to its prime and they add sulfur to it to help preserve it until it gets to its prime. And blackstrap molasses that is unsulfured, it basically, it uses mature sugar cane. Cane that has already reached its prime and so they use that and so no sulfur is added. Overall, I don't think there's a huge deal as far as the sulfur being added. So I don't want to put anything out there that, oh my God, don't use sulfur. I'm not saying that. Overall, it has been deemed safe, but people usually try and use the unsulfur. You know, if you have a choice between the two, why not use the one that is already used mature sugarcane, therefore that additive is not needed. So that's why I said I would you know, I would lean more towards the unsulfured, but the choice is up to you. But black strap molasses, that's my whole point. Black strap molasses is where it's at. Now I used to buy mine from Trader Joe's 
and they stopped making it. I, I, again, let, let's not do that. We're not gonna go down that rabbit hole of how I hate when people stop making products that you really like. I'm going to unball my fist and put them on my lap. I'm fine, I'm okay, we are gonna keep on going. <laughs> so they don't make that anymore. But you should be able to find black strap molasses, you know, in a lot of different stores, maybe a health store, maybe online. But yeah, if you're looking for something that is really, that has a whole lot of stuff in the kitchen sink underneath its cap, that is really going to add benefit to your overall health, black strap molasses, you may want, it, you put just put it on the list, okay? Just, just put it on the list. Just trust me, just, just put it on the list. Okay, guys, so that wasn't too bad, right? So we got a hair BNB, okay? Hair BNB. We got black castor oil or Jamaican black castor oil, aka JBCO. You may see that little acronym, you know, floating around. That's what that means. Jamaican black castor oil, JBCO, okay? And black strap molasses, okay? I don't think we have a acronym for that, but black strap molasses, okay? Black strap molasses, black castor oil, these two things, B and B, they are bomb and bomb diggity. These two things can be very helpful in your hair journey, helpful in your health journey overall, as far as especially the molasses uh, with the black castor oil, that's topical. And the black strap molasses, that can be ingested. Of course, that's internal. We want to take that. We don't, it's not topical. That's internal. We, we, we taking that in. We imbibing it. Okay. So hair B and B, that's what the topic is, was today. Okay. I hope you were catching what I was throwing out. Okay. I hope you were picking up what I was putting down. Okay. Because I think these are worth noting. I think these are notables worth talking about, okay? So that wasn't too bad, right? We were in and out, okay? I want to thank you so much for dialing in and showing up. I really do appreciate it. I really do. I really do. And yeah, we'll be back talking about some more stuff, honey. We got more stuff to talk about, more stuff to chit chat about. So you gotta come back for that. So you already know. It's going to be the same Dolce Dial. It's going to be the same Dolce Channel. So you come on back. <laughs>